Thank you, Chairman Gosar, Ranking Member Stansbury, and members of the committee for the opportunity to be here today. My name is Jamie Plune. I'm an associate professor at the University of Utah Law School. We have done extensive uh, empirical research on NEPA and its implementation times. Little is known about uh, the National Environmental Policy Act and its process. The data that is available focuses exclusively on environmental impact statements. To address this shortage of information, my colleagues John Ruppel and Eric Heine and I undertook the most comprehensive analysis of NEPA decision making that has been conducted. We analyzed 16 years of Forest Service data, which was 41,000 NEPA decisions. The first question that we sought to answer was how long does the NEPA process really take? We found that the median time to complete an EIS was 2.8 years. For an EA, it was 1.2 years. And for a CE, it was only three months, four months. These evidence-based timeframes are dramatically shorter than the anecdotal timeframes that are often cited. We also reaffirmed the GAO estimate that EISs are an extremely small percentage of all NEPA decisions, specifically within the Forest Service, who conducts the more EISs than any other agency, EISs constitute only 2% of all decisions. The other 98% face less rigorous review. To put this in perspective, very roughly, when we looked at the evidence over 16 years, only 200 decisions took longer than four years, and 33,000 took less than one. For immediate, the median time for projects that have identified, known, well understood, and insignificant impacts is four months. We also looked for reasons for delay. Using an, um, we developed a regression analysis that was able to look at NEPA-specific factors. And we found that those could only predict 25% of the variation. This meant that the primary causes of delay were external to the NEPA, NEPA regulatory process. Specifically, we found that the primary causes of de delay are a lack of agency capacity, specifically Pod, pro, excuse me, project hit bottlenecks when there are insufficient staff members to review a permit or when there are per, not enough staff members with the expertise that's necessary to review a permit. Additionally, unstable budgets and outdated technology cause delays. There were also d delays in waiting for information from the operator. And finally, compliance with other laws and coordinating with other agencies or um, coordinating with a, within a team that's approving a permit also caused delay. This finding was consistent with an observation made by the Congressional Research Service that NEPA, NEPA often functions as an umbrella service statute. That is, it serves as a framework for compliance with other laws and regulatory requirements. Delays caused by compliance with those other legal standards are reflected in the NEPA process, but NEPA itself is not the cause of delay. This interplay is study visible in a study connect, conducted by Amanda Miner regarding Forest Service litigation. Her research recognized that NEPA litigation usually involves multiple legal claims. Focusing on the cases in which the Forest Service lost, her research showed that 69% of the time the Forest Service would have lost even if NEPA did not exist. This is important because reforms that focus solely on speeding up NEPA completion times may compromise agencies' ability to comply with the mandates of other laws, which would ultimately create more delay in implementing projects. After completing the study of Forest Service decision making, we looked at mine permitting, the mine permitting process. We found the same three primary causes of delay have consistently been identified in uh, research investigations since 1999. So what does this tell us about permit reform? First, the biggest source of delay is a lack of staff and unstable budgets. The most important thing to improve permit processing time is to bolster agency capacity. They must have sufficient staff and staff with relevant expertise. With expanded capacity, agencies can engage in pre-application meetings with project sponsors and encourage early engagement with stakeholders. This will address the second cause of delay, waiting for information from operators. Finally, encouraging coordination between permitting authorities is a way to streamline the permitting process and make it more predictable. The procedures incorporated through FAST 41 have been effective in achieving predictability, transparency, imp and improved timelines. Significantly, this is important because these are the most complex projects available. 
Thank you.